Welcome back to Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke, and you've joined us for our panel discussion. This is my favorite part of the show because we get to get different perspectives from all of our guests this week on uh, a number of different topics. And so we've got back Thomas Kenny from Northwest Career College, Amy, who just joined us from the payroll company, and Lene Forbes from Forbes Realty Group, correct? Yeah, right. I want to make sure I get that right. So I do my homework, I do my research, I'm just really forgetful sometimes. So, <laughs> um, so what I want to talk about today, because we have Thomas coming from Northwest Career College, and in our segment before we talked about four-year college isn't always the right thing for everyone. Yes. And one of the things that our K-12 through education system, not just here in Las Vegas, but kind of in the United States focuses on is getting everybody ready for four-year college. Yeah. So they choose to do certain things that may or may not be great for kids when they're coming out of high school. So uh, if you keep up with the paper here in Las Vegas, the news, education is always a topic here. There's a lot of opinions and politics around it here, as I'm sure there are in the rest of the country. But let's start with you, Thomas. What do you think the skills and the education that kids need coming out of K through 12 to be successful, especially if they're not really interested or they don't think their career path lies along going to a four-year college. Honestly, one of the biggest things that I've seen working with our students coming straight out of high school is a lack of writing skills. That is mm -hmm. one of the, the primary focuses is that um, they're not prepared to correspond in a professional setting. Basic email skills, basic preparing of uh, written memos, submitting pr uh, you know projects and mm -hmm. stuff like that. and. You know, I, I've seen that be something that we've really placed a huge emphasis on is increasing training on how to write emails professionally, how to communicate in a professional manner, because whatever profession you go into, that's going to be something that you can take with you and, and make use of that. So how many emojis are okay <laughs> in a professional email? Uh, you know, and, that, and that's something that I've slipped on a little bit. Every once in a while, I'll throw one in. Typically zero. Typically but, you know, zero, but typically maybe zero. one. Maybe depending. a smiley at the end, like you if a, you really want them to know. You have a family business. Yeah. You, can, you can put in a couple, right? Yeah, we'll throw in a, a, a couple here and your there. Your dad's not real strict on that. No, you know, if you actually see an email from Dr. John, he'll he'll throw in a few more than we do. Okay. He'll usually throw a couple. So so <laughs> keep the emojis to a minimum, folks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Linda, I have what do you something think? actually interesting to say about that. You know, I homeschooled my son for a number of years, and one of the things that I benefited from was teaching him how to write. Yeah. And my writing skills actually improved for doing that. So I think being involved in your kids' education mm -hmm. is huge. Now, as for the emojis, I think they're great because a lot of things are lost in translation. Mm -hmm. An emoji can actually fix some of that. So there's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Things, okay. things, can get, things can get very uh, clinical and very sterile in a professional email. Uh, and I, lear I learned a very much a similar thing when I was an instructor in the Air Force. Uh, I was reading a lot of papers and grading a lot of papers. And I, I learned a lot about how you make the case for something and how you really build an argument for something, having to read a lot of those papers that I had to then go grade and say, you didn't do this so great. So, <laughs> so uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I think be instructing someone, teaching someone how to do something is really the best way to learn it yourself. So what do you think, Amy? You know, I think that students will really embrace things on an educational side if they're interested in it. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I see that's kind of lacking in our youth today is their level of kind of politeness and manners and things like mm -hmm. that. And that's something that's not taught in schools. It's something that starts at home mm -hmm. and something that they're using around their peers. So when they're ready to join the workforce or maybe they're right out of high school looking for a new job or a new career, it's very interesting to see, you know, their mannerisms and how they interact with other people. So um, because all they've had is interactions with students that are their own age or friends of, that are their own age. So I think that, you know, kind of emphasizing a little bit more of that professional communication would be more ideal. Yeah, we, you and I talked about networking in our segment before and, <laughs> and, you know, we didn't really get into the nuts and bolts and the keys to doing it successfully, but we've been to plenty of events where people aren't really communicating in a either professional or a friendly and open manner. Yes, and, that's true. And I'd, I'd love to see a little more of that, whether it is um, in the in our K-12 through education or somewhere like Northwest Career College, or you you could probably start a school. Are you, are you Let's open to, do it! Are you, are you open to starting another business? Okay, yes. So what, here's my idea then. If we were going to go start a school today, what I would do is go back to the old days of schooling when you had the classroom, all the grades in the same classroom, and that mm -hmm. older te children were teaching the younger children while the teacher was teaching the older children. And guess what? When we go into the workforce, are we going to, to the workforce in the same age groups? No. Oh. Older, 
younger. Mm -hmm. So that's where when you said that little statement that people don't have respect or et cetera, it's because they don't know how to interact with other generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a little, little, little cross-generational uh, uh, communication and collaboration before they actually make it to the workplace. I yeah. actually do a whole, whole workshop on that. But uh, you just said today, yeah. teaching someone to do something helps you learn it. For sure. Yes. Why not? We've taken that power away from our children. For sure. Now, flipping it on its head a little bit, and not just talking about what all these these young kids today don't have that they need to have. <laughs> what's a Amy? What's a skill you wish you got, had gotten uh, before you went into the workforce that you didn't get from your education? Ooh, maybe it's persistence. You know, it, it's so easy to kind of give up if you got a bad grade. Okay, well, I got this bad grade. Mm -hmm. On to the next one. Um, now, what I'm learning in sales and in conversions and all the things I'm doing is to be persistent and you know no doesn't mean no it means not now mm -hmm. and just that idea just just in sales <laughs> just, yeah. put, put, put your twitter down put your twitter down yeah um no some 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 people need seven or eight interactions uh, minimum yes. before they're willing to buy and i'm sure you see that think in your about, business all the time think about children they're our best sales people what do they do they consistently go like this mom can i have this can i have this can i have this how many times did they say you said no mm -hmm. and eventually you go how many no's to a yes and we Very lose true. that as as when we get into the workforce ourselves we're mm -hmm. not like children for sure. So, what is uh, what is something they that they didn't teach you in dental school that you wish you knew? Oh my goodness! Uh, Before well, you went into practice, he smiles. Yeah, yes. no, it's. Uh, I mean, there were a lot of business uh, business skills that I feel that I've learned from being out in business rather than in dental school. But one of the most important things that I learned in business that I never learned there is goal setting and how to do mm -hmm. professional goal setting and use that as a way to. Um, create your own reality because genuinely that is something where you can go and go as far as you want to if you really have clear steps on how to proceed and mm -hmm. oftentimes nobody teaches you that you know as basic as writing it down specific measurable goals and that's something that I feel is incredibly important that I wish I you know connected with sooner it's yes. so it's so funny how how that uh, can just change everything I was working with a client the other day and she was she was really worried about this meeting she was going and I said what's your goal for like, what are your goals going to this meeting she's like what are you talking about I don't do that <laughs> so yeah. so I was like okay okay oh we're, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make your life really easy this <laughs> afternoon yeah. right so so um, all of you have teams around you what is something you do to build the team around you to help you be successful what is uh, what, what are some successful team building skills you found I don't no one works for me everybody works with me that in, it, that's an empowerment mm -hmm. for people, and then delegate and let them go, let go. Okay. Delegation very important. That that comes with building a team around you that you can have uh, a good bit of trust in, and that's a whole separate skill all on its own. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how about you, Amy? <laughs> um, you know, I really just work on raising my life condition every day. Mm -hmm. I, I work on just having the biggest life condition where if a problem arises and my team gives up. Because sometimes they're my first line of defense. Mm -hmm, and if sure. they give up, I just kind of make my life so big that I look mm -hmm. over and see the problem as something small and, and present it to them with the most solutions. I try to be, or I am, the most positive person on my team. Because without that, I see that, you know, in my industry, it's so easy to get bogged down over laws or over this or that or the way things are said. Mm -hmm. mm, no, not to me. There's always a solution. And, and that's what I bring to my team. She's a good team player. Yeah. I, I think that's I think that's so important. You hit on something really important there that when people are working on a team, they're not looking to their leader just to tell them what to do. They're looking to be inspired. And by having that positive attitude, that's one of the ways you you kind of boost yourself up so you can be inspiring to your team. I think that's I think that's a that's a really valuable piece of advice is if you're if you're having trouble getting your team to stay positive, be the most positive person on yes. your team. Absolutely. How about you? You know, one of the biggest things that's helped me is just looking for ways in which I can help my team grow in the ways that they're looking to grow professionally. And having them, again, kind of tying it back to goal setting, let me know where they want to be in three years, five years. Are they looking to become a director of a department? Are they looking to build their own team? And figuring out ways to empower them to do that, either through my own experience or through other people that I've worked with. And I look at myself as a facilitator and somebody who passes information. I work with 
an incredible team of people. I, I supervise 10 different program directors, all of these very high level quality people. And they have so many pearls of wisdom that I could never provide. Yeah. And really, I'm just trying to connect them with each other and find ways for these leaders to work with one another. Um, you know, and, and that's how I see myself really building a, a strong team around me. That, that's what I learned after 20 years in the Air Force is when it comes to leadership, it can't be about you as the leader. It's mm -hmm. got to be about the members of your team mm -hmm. and not just what they do for you today, but where they're going in the future, where they want to go in the future and how you're going to help them grow to that point to get there. Yeah. So. We're out of time. That's a great place to stop it. But Thomas, tell everyone again how they can get a hold of you in Northwest Career College. Feel free to go to our website at northwestcareercollege.edu or give us a call at 702-254-7577. Amy? You can visit us at tpcpayrollhr.com or call us directly 702-861-0164. And uh, Forbes Realty Group at ForbesRealtyGroup.com or 213-FLIPOUT. Ooh, fancy! <laughs> and, and I think we've decided that we're all going to have you're going to have all of you back at some point because you have your show coming up, mm -hmm. and if, when that comes along, and you have some new programs you're going to release, and we we just love having you here. Anyway, oh, so. thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you everybody for watching. Uh, who joined us? I can't even I can't even read that. Greg Forbes is that. <laughs> Somebody oh. you know. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for watching, Greg. Great to have you here. I'm Jason LaDuke. We will be back fourth week of August for the business version of Geeks Are Sexy. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye.